Welcome back to Beat the Meat. Continuing that Beat the Meat Mince series, we've got another mince idea for you today. So let's check it out. Starting with one cup of wheat gluten flour. One cup of white rice flour. Over here, we got two teaspoons, as always, two regular teaspoons, the ones you stir your coffee with, of fennel seeds. And I'm just having fun with this <laughs> kitty sized <laughs> pestle and mortar. Just going to break it up a bit if we can. If only to release some of those beautiful oils and flavors. Okay, that'll do. You get the idea. Putting that in. Nutmeg. Quite a lot of nutmeg this time. One teaspoon. Clove powder. Quarter of a teaspoon. Well, quarter of a teaspoon of Kashmiri chili powder. About one and a half teaspoons of salt. Check this out, my friends. Red cabbage, also known as purple cabbage. This is one eighth of a whole cabbage. So I bought a half a cabbage, cut that into four pieces, and this is one of the four pieces, okay? So it's an eighth of a whole head of cabbage, red cabbage, uh, chopped up as fine as I could be bothered. Um, you just don't want the pieces too big. If you want to chop it finer than this, uh, that, that would be a good idea. To more of a mince <laughs> grain. <laughs> About the, consist uh, about the size of a, a little piece of minced meat. We're not using the rice bran oil today. Why? Because the red cabbage has a compound with this ready purple color. And that particular compound is something that helps with lots of things, but what it really helps with what it does help with is managing the blood sugar in the body, okay? So the Beat the Meat Mint series, we got, we're going to have lots of ideas for lots of different views and opinions on what ingredients should be put into these kind of things, right? And the most contentious thing at the moment, I, I think from the stuff I've watched online, is the oil, right? So having the cabbage in here, okay, it's adding a nice, super healthy vegetable, which some people might be so unhealthy that they can't even handle doing something like this, right? But anyway, this is another idea. Add the cabbage. We don't have to use the naughty rice bran oil. We can now use coconut oil. So some may agree that this is a step up. It's refined coconut oil. We've got the red cabbage in this idea, but I'll tell you something. Cabbage, one of my favorite vegetables, and personally, it's super biogenic for me. It's a really good, it's good for the gut, it's just good for so much stuff. It's also, believe it or not, <laughs> dare I say, meaty. It's a very meaty vegetable. The final ingredient, that's about half a cup of water here. We won't add all of it yet. We're just going to see how this turns out. Mm. 
Half a cup's gone in. That's about 125 milliliters. One more thing I want to say is the hotel pan. The hotel pan is my favorite, and I, I don't know if you noticed with the lasagna, I used, I made the, the meat mince replacement in the last episode, took it out, and then I made the lasagna in exactly the same pan without really cleaning it. That's why I like the hotel pan. It's just, these are just so good to use. So I recommend getting a hotel pan. They're really cheap. It's just a thin stainless steel, easy to clean, Pretty much everything you make in it comes out relatively easy and what's left behind is easy to clean after a little bit of a soak and it stays like, see it stays nice and shiny and new down the bottom. Hopefully we get some cabbages in the garden um, this winter um, going. Um, we haven't had much success, well we, Julia, the superstar gardener, uh, we haven't had much success there. And, and man, veggies, everything's so expensive at the moment. This is becoming like a survivalist cooking show, eh? Soon we're gonna be blooming out in the blooming out on the verge, picking up bloody weeds from the verge for a cooking show, because it's getting pretty desperate, guys. But I never thought I'd say red cabbage. Ooh, what a treat! But hey. <laughs> so, a bit dry. Just clean that off. It's a bit dry. What is gonna happen? Obviously the cabbage, as it cooks, it's going to release some liquid. Let's see how this turns out. So it's going into a moderate oven, 180 degrees. Chuck that in, get that down the back. It's been half an hour. Let's see what we got. There we have it. Yeah, that's right, so... Have a look here. Wow, it smells very meaty. And the cabbages have, yeah, released some moisture into the flowers, the flower. And it's got, it feels like the texture's really, really good. And there you have it. We're gonna have to try it. It's pretty hot. We'll just let it cool down. While we're letting it cool down, I'll do my little natural law talk now. Red cabbage has those compounds I was mentioning, or that particular compound. And what am I trying to say? Is there was a contrast, a balance of red and white in the cabbage when you've cut it and had a look inside. The law of, dare I say, correspondence, or how everything's kind of connected. There's a balance of red and white, okay? The cabbage is balancing the blood sugar levels, okay? The color of blood, red, the color of sugar, as we just, with our eyes see, sugar in the pantry is white, red and white in balance. So it's this kind of view, these kind of ways of looking at things is I would say most important when you're going to something which is quite extreme really, which is a vegan diet. You gotta get your wacky spiritual kind of hat on and start viewing things like this, start working with your intuition for the diet to be successful. So personally, I really don't believe that it's a coincidence that a red cabbage has red and white uh, as sort of balance of the colors when you cut it open. I don't think it's a coincidence that the red and the white uh, corresponds to, you know, <laughs> when you put that, when you think about that, corresponds to a balance of blood sugar in the body when you eat cabbage. But there you go. So that's my natural law spiel for the day. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, it's pretty hot, but hey, I'm used to burning my mouth. Guys, it's almost getting to a point where like these things taste so much like meat that it's like, why am I even bothering going vegan? 
Seriously. This, like all the other ones, unorthodox, looks weird. Weird ingredients, loads of nutmeg in this, what the heck, cloves. People don't really want to know what, that cloves are going into these things. Guys, give this one a go. If you can get your red cabbage down at your supermarket or if you're handy in the garden, you know how to grow it, let us know. <laughs> Delicious. This one, like all the other recipes, it goes in replace in place of meat mince and whatever recipe you choose to make. So give this one a go. You might prefer it to the other ones. Trust me, you're going to be surprised how this one tastes. See you at the next one.